Hey, hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the third, the third, I tell you, in another live Mr. Wiggly Sunday broadcast. Thank you so much for joining. And I know quite a few people do catch it, catch up on catch up if you like believe it or not, which is amazing. Um, this time, I have no guest whatsoever. Um, and I'm going to do something I've not done before. I thought I would chuck myself in at the deep end and try and do a kind of uh, sort of track from scratch kind of thing. More, more a case of how, how you make creative stuff on a door. Anyway, let's just see. It kind of felt a bit interesting to me. Um, make sure that you can hear me. No one's moaning about a lack of audio, so that's good. Um, say have a quick look uh, at the people in the chat hello inky who is our moderator as always for the day so please be nice to inky don't be nasty to anyone spread the love especially because it's dub reggae day uh, and she will make sure everyone stays very happy graham hart is in the chat i used to work with graham he has no idea what dub is but he's about to find out thank you graham i've known him for many many years keith in watford is in as always callum was the very first one in with a very Cool, Yara Rastafari. Yara Rastafari. Hello, Benjamin. You're not sticking around, I don't think, but hopefully uh, you can catch it up on Catch Up. Martin Taylor. Wagyu is always there for everybody and supports all these streams, which is flipping brilliant. I'd love to meet you in real life sometime. Um, and Sensian is in there too, and a bunch of other people. So many, many thanks. If you're watching uh, on Facebook, it's probably better to jump over onto the YouTube link. Um, but don't worry, I mean, you can search Mr. Wiggly on YouTube, maybe someone can paste the YouTube link here, but most of the people come over and chat in the YouTube chat rather than the Facebook chat, so if you want to get to know people, jump over. I think we're live on Twitch as well, but who can tell? Anyway, so, this is the scary bit. What I thought I'd do is I'd take an empty door and just load up what I think would be a kind of dub reggae thing. Now, now clearly my background and my upbringing does not qualify me in the slightest to know about dub reggae. I just love, um, I just love the sound. I love the vibe. I love the positivity. Um, I like the fact that it can kind of blend into the background a lot or actually be kind of in your face, that whole thing. And I really like the rhythms and the movement of the whole thing. And, and so do a lot of pop bands and massive bands. I mean, it's tinged all over with, I mean, forget UB40, who are outright kind of reggae, but... A lot of the police stuff was based on um, kind of the reggae backbeat rhythms. It touches a whole wealth of music. And there is so much stuff out there. They're one of the only streams, that music streams, that seem to work on Facebook these days without getting pulled for copyright reasons are the reggae channels. Because it's like there's nothing on Spotify from them. Um, which on the one hand is great so we can listen to them, but on the other hand it's just terrible. There's so, so many good tracks out there. So please don't think this is any authoritative take on how to make reggae or, or I know what I'm doing or anything. I just think it kind of sounds good. And it also highlights a couple of things which you might not have come across in a door in terms of like using a mixing desk as an instrument. I think that's when, when you're making dub. Um, then uh, you know it makes a it makes a massive difference. You rather than just kind of put it in, mix it, press go, you can actually do some really creative things. And you don't need a real mixing desk. You can do it with a with a MIDI controller or something. So I'm going to use Logic, but you can do it in Ableton. You can do it all over the shop with pretty much anything that you've got, as long as it's got a mixing desk built in. Um, this is my empty door. It has one audio track there. We don't want it. I'm just going to stick a drum beat in, a bass line in, a couple of bits and pieces, and then I'm going to add some echoes and some some blooms and some reverb and that kind of stuff. A um, couple of people in the chat are mentioning a John Cooper Clark dub that I did, uh, which was live for Clownfest. Um, I'm quite proud of that one. Might be worth a look. It's somewhere around. It's probably, I don't think it's on the Worcester Wiggly channel it's on facebook i'll see if i can dig it out i haven't uploaded it because i didn't get permission from john cooper clark and all the time i've been contacting his uh, management uh, they're not responding which is which is a real shame but i don't want to do any disservice to him because obviously i don't want to use his uh, his poetry and stuff without some kind of authorization so i'll sure keep trying anyway um okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add uh a drum track now i never normally use contact but for some reason i just don't tend to to use it that much but i'm going to add a, a software instrument and i'm going to add a, a contact library so that's just your standard native instruments contact and it's from a company called drum drops which are 
just brilliant. I mean, they're so brilliant. I almost don't want to mention them because they're, they're not as well known as some. Uh, this is a Rogers Big Dub kit. So it's a, a live kit that's been kind of sampled and done really, really well. And uh, let's see if you can hear this. I think you can. Thumbs up if you can hear that. Um, it might, hopefully it's not too loud as well. Maybe turn it down a bit in case it's getting you really around the head here. Um, now there's about there's kind of three main kind of beats with the reggae stuff. There's um, rockers, steppers, and a kind of one drop. Thanks, Wagyu. Um, and the the rockers beat is like um, uh, the one drop is on the three. So it's one, two, three, and one, two. And, and the steppers is kind of my favourite, which is the um, that kind of rhythm that you get. Um, so I'm going to do one of those, and we'll see where we get to. And I did have a little bit of paper going on, but never mind. Let's see. Let's get a tempo going. It's 138. That'll do. The one thing with the steppers is kind of is kind of cool is is that you've got quite a fast kick drum on there. All right, let's do that a lot better. I'm going to do the kick in the rim shot first. Okay, and then I'm going to do a hi hat part on the whole thing i'm just going to duplicate this entire track I, what you could do is just use one instance of contact and have loads of different outputs but it's kind of not worth it this is going to be so simple let's do a loop around that whoops uh, there's a loop okay we'll double that up Okie dokie, so that sounds pretty damn awful, but no quantize or anything. What's kind of cool though is um, if you don't quantize it kind of completely, so any what I'd normally do in anything like techno or anything, one, one way of choosing dub actually was to try and get away from four to the floor as well for this, but I could hit quantize and I could hit quantize uh, on the hi hats as well, and then it's bang on the beat, it's all good, right? But if we just do a semi-quantize, so you have a strength control in Logic and Ableton and all the rest of it, which will just nudge the quantize a little bit back to where it should sit. So I've moved it 50%. Kind of sounds, it still sounds human. And to be honest, if I'd been concentrating, I could have probably played it better, but at least it, it moves, you know. Um, and we'll do the same with the hi-hat, which I might add was really terribly played, right? So that's bang on. That's a little bit out. Okay. All right, so that's good. We've got a basic backbeat going. Now I can add, funnily enough, another contact library. Um, has some shakers and stuff in it. I think it's called Shimmer and Shake. Yeah, Morgan's saying quantized by percentage. So it was around, around about 50%. Uh, so come back into this contact. It's, I use contact a lot when I'm doing kind of dub stuff. I think there's just some really nice libraries in there, but if I'm doing techno-y stuff and everything else or pop stuff, I kind of use some sort of loops or some samples and I ended up using the, the internal sample that, that's kind of based on uh, based in Logic. Anyway, so in here, I should have, as part of the main library, uh, this thing called Shimmer Shake Strike, which is really neat, actually. So let's load that up. Oh, I have to get rid of this first, so I get rid of that one. And get rid of this one and load this up again. Okay. This has a bunch of instruments in it um, that you can choose. So you've got shakers and all sorts of weird and wonderful percussion based around different parts. Um, and you can you can pick them basically. So um, you know, I can choose what kind of instrument here clear shaker tambourine studio shaker there's tons of different things um and this is too fast for my for my reggae beats so i'm going to flip it to half speed it's kind of cool 
uh, and there's lots of different patterns, but I'm, I'm not going to mess around too much with this. I just think the tambourine might be a little bit too much. So, okay, that sounds pretty good. So all I have to do is I'll record that in. Just bit off the top of the screen there. Give me a second. So. Cool. And I will quantize that on the beat and make sure it's the right length because it's literally it's just playing a, effectively a loop. It's worth checking out that library because you can do way, way more stuff than this. But because it's real, it honestly, it gives a really nice effect. So, OK, so next I'm going to add like a bass line of some kind. Um, let's have a trillion. I just bought trillion because it was on sale, which is part of the uh, Omnisphere kind of suite of packages. And uh, it's pretty awesome, actually. I mean, it would be, wouldn't it? Uh, there's something called uh, like a dub guitar on here. Uh, and it's just a very boomy, straight uh, dub. Let's have a look. Muted Marcus Deep Dub. Really good. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop these out just a little bit. I should have given them more, more of a more than a two bar pat to be honest, but just for now, we'll just do it like this. Uh, just come up with something. Okay, all good by one bar note, which I can capture. I'm going to turn that up a bit for you guys as well. Okay, there is that nasty bum note there. So I'll move that up. Not quantized either. I'm better at playing bass. Um, so. Okie doke. So hopefully there. I've got some dry shakers here. This is Morgan. Discover these little round tins with various amounts of little minor sweets to make nice. Yes, totally, totally. Percussion is so important. I got one of these. Uh, it came in a kids set, uh, and there's a few other bits lying around. Um, and it's just, just brilliant. Anything. I mean, just, just shake that in, in here. Makes a difference. Um, but it's a bit too annoying to kind of try and get this sort of stuff out. And Callum is mentioning Thievery Corporation. My wife introduced me to Thievery Corporation. I'd never come across them before. We were on holiday and it was playing in a cafe that we were sitting on. It's just, just, just brilliant. Really, really good. It's quite kind of clean sounding. So the, the dub stuff I'm listening to is more kind of the older, you know, 70s and 80s stuff with my professor. And, and But before that, you know, kind of real stuff on eight-track on eight, uh, eight desks and stuff. Frozen peas in a can also works. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So uh, I don't want to see that music, really. So let's turn that down. Now I'm going to add, uh, funnily enough, maybe another contract, contact library with some piano in it. So let's have another software instrument. Let's go into contact again. It's really funny how everything's contact today. Uh, there's this piano thing that we talked about on uh, Sonic State a while ago. Um, and let me find out what it's called. Uh, where are we? We need to get some. Here we go. Noir. It's like a felt piano thing. It's really good. They've got pure piano and felt piano, and it's got sort of built-in weird and wonderful uh, effects and things. But it's 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 kind of nice and a bit a bit dull sounding. So we'll try it. Um, let's just find one. Bright felt. See what that sounds like. Okay, let's see, let's see what that's going to go. I'll do.
Okie doke. We ought to be naming these things. I'm amazed no one's picked me up picked me up on this one before. So piano. Uh what was that one? That was the bass. So we'll do some of that. Uh this was the shakers. And uh, this was the hi hat. And this was the kick and snare. Now, actually, that's a good point. What I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that kick channel and I'm going to copy it across and I'm going to make that one a snare and that one a kick. So I'm going to go into here, get rid of, well, it's not a snare, it's a rim shot, isn't it? But I'm going to get rid of the rim shot on that one and I'm going to here and I'm going to get rid of the kick drum on that one just to have them on separate tracks so I can add some effects. All right, so there's a basic backbeat going on. How are we doing? 15 minutes. 15 minutes. All right, so we're not doing too badly. It wouldn't win that, uh, was it the 10-minute challenge, I think? But, yeah, who knows? So, anyway, there's, that's your basic idea. That's a stepper's beat because it's a dum dum ka dum ka You get it on uh, the most classic ones, probably Grace Jones, um, obviously, of modern pop times. Um, uh, Private Lives. It's when Sly and Robbie were on that one. If you if you look at Sly and, and, and Robbie, they are just amazing. Um, okay, so we got that far. So now I'm going to talk about the mixing desk a little bit. If I set up um, an echo and a reverb on a couple of sends, so let's take that snare for a moment. Um, on Logic, you get, uh, hopefully you can see where my cursor is. Um, you get effect sends, right? So you or, or sends to buses. So you can send. I'm going to put them in on bus number ten and bus number eleven. I can send the anything from within here to a bus, and on that bus, um, I can add an effect. So I'm going to add a delay, and I'm just going to use a Logic standard tape delay. There are a ton of different delays about. This one will do. It may not be as brilliant as some others, but it's actually really really good so if i play this and turn up the delay and i've added it to the wrong channel so just give me a second uh, i've put it over here and whereas it should be just here okay Oh, there it is. You just hear it because it's too quiet. So we'll turn it up. Right, so dub. If you think of dub, you'll think probably of a delay, which is a uh, triplet. So maybe an eighth triplet. Or maybe a, let's have a look. Is it a dotted eight then? There you go. Not a triplet at all, a dotted. So that kind of thing. That's the kind of tri uh, triplet -y dotted beat that you get for the dub stuff that, you go, that you're, you're dropping into. Now, feedback in a delay sets how much feedback occurs within the unit. So it's that how long those, how many echoes you'll get. So if I turn it right up the top, and we send it, it's going to go. Boom, 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 boom. I apologise if you're listening on headphones. It's just going to go on forever and feedback on itself. Uh, so we, with dub, you need to be able to balance that really, really carefully. So the basic idea of what I do, you could sit there and you could move this knob. But what I do is I send it back to itself. So here's the, where the delay comes back. I just literally create another send to itself and turn it up. So it's doing exactly the same job as that feedback knob in most plugins. I do apologize for <laughs> Morgan's just burning his speakers out. Um, some plugins I've noticed on delay have algorithms behind the feedback section, which kind of makes them sound different to if you simply feed the thing back on itself. Um, so, so yeah, Jim's saying he's playing it through the mixer. This is kind of where I'm, where, where I'm getting to. So if you uh, play this again, I can turn up the feedback and it will just carry on and go away and then, you know, 
honk around. Now, it's all a little bit too perfect, that delay. What it should be doing is splashing a little bit about and, and kind of changing itself. It's so perfect that you're just hearing it kind of synchronise with itself. So you have a flatter rate and an intensity here, which being a tape delay is kind of... Uh, on a tape delay, you'd literally be recording the signal into a tape and pulling it back off the tape half a second later. And so the tape might be wobbling and fluttering because the motors are slightly out of sync or whatever. Um, and they might be going, ooh, ooh. and people used to work very hard to get rid of that effect. But actually, it's a really good effect when you're using this kind of stuff. Hence, we can dial in that kind of setting. It's also good to cut down the top end and the bottom end a little bit. Uh, and let's add a bit of spread here. I think that's something to do with the alignment of the heads, but let's just see where we're at now. Yeah, that's all right. So let's cut this down a bit more. Threshold should be there. Turn that down. Now we're getting somewhere. Because we've cut the high end of the delay, it's instead of going, tss, tss, it's going tss, 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 to a degree, which is great. That's where I want to be. Cool. The next uh, effect, which would be quite good, is spring reverb, which is kind of all over dub reggae. So I can pull in on this effect send. In fact, I'm going to turn that one down so we don't get in a mess. And I'll put the uh, tape delay uh, feedback down. Here, I'm going to add a spring reverb. Spring reverbs seem to be really hard to find in plugins that actually work well. Um, they kind of sound springy and weird, but they don't work well. I found one, funnily enough, in the built-in Logic reverb, of all things. I haven't found a decent one outside of that yet. Uh, and it's called... Let's have a look. Uh, remind me, Dominic, where is it? Um, is it in here? Let me just check. Hold on. It's not Chroma Verb, it's Space Designer, which is, again, another built-in Logic uh, reverb. Uh, and we have... Uh, let's have a look at this. In the large spaces, in the spring reverb section, which is a first for most reverbs, actually having a spring reverb, uh, I think it's Rack Spring Flat. I did jot it down, to be honest, but... Yeah, Rack Spring Flat. So there it is. Um, I'm going to drop it to the second space there because I'm going to put something in front of it in a minute. But there's my note. I can send it to the spring reverb. And that's great. A spring reverb is exactly that. Um, it's a spring. <laughs> and you feed the sound in one end by a tiny little almost piezo speaker. And uh, it vibrates a spring and you put a really sensitive microphone at the other end. And that's what it sounds like. And back in the day, that was the best reverb you could get. And then they started building plate reverbs out of huge honking great pieces of metal, where if you did the same, the whole metal would kind of be a little less springy sounding, but obviously it needed a huge amount of space to, to work. Anyway, there is our uh, effect. So again, now I can start playing around. you're getting that, uh, that effect on the spring. What makes a spring reverb sound really good in real life, I've, I've made one. You can buy springs off of Amazon, I think, to replace the springs in guitar amps because they still have spring reverbs inside. And you can build your own, and I've done that a few times. This is close enough for, for this kind of demo. Um, if you put a short delay before them, uh, for a snare, you get a delay before the reverb hits. So it kind of goes snare, delay, reverb and it makes the snare kind of just come out a little bit more and not get buried now in uh pieces of kit like the space designer there's a pre-delay uh setting here but rather than mess with that i'm literally going to do what i would do with a normal spring i'm just going to add another delay a, a tape delay same as we had before and i'm just going to have it no feedback really really simple um really short and then let's see uh, what it sounds like. So at the moment, I'm going to turn it up as well. Here's it. If I increase that delay, you'll get a delay before the reverb kicks in. So, so that's a bit too much. So that'll probably work quite nicely. 
Let's see, we can always tweak it afterwards. Too much. And the other thing we need to do is kind of kind of make it a bit dirty, cut the top end off of it so it's kind of um just becomes a bit nastier. There you go. So you now you kind of got <laughs> hopefully you get right here. This isn't the world's most amazing thing in the world, but uh, it's taken 20 25 minutes. That's not bad. So we got the whole thing. Now, if you start then adding that spring reverb to the delay that we started with, then you're really talking. So I'm just not I'm not going to add it onto the snare itself. Okay, we're back to a dry thing. I'm going to go back to the um, delay that we added. Sorry about that. Let's just turn that on. Um, the tape delay that we added. And I'm going to add a send to the tape delay to send it into the spring reverb. So we can already send the tape delay into itself to get the feedback, but we can add a bit of spring reverb in there as well. And then I'm going to add it to the snare. So let's see what happens. pretty cool. And we really are only playing with the um, with the rim shot at the moment. So that's kind of cool. Um, what I would also add is some filtering. Uh, and so a lot of the times you can put it over the whole mix to bring uh, the, the frequencies up and down a bit. So, so, you know, a bit like a DJ does on uh, the EQ sections in a, a DJ mix. So lift up the bottom end and then slam it back in again. That's another one to add. Um, and I'll do that in a second. And then also the key to this, and hopefully I can show you by flicking the camera angle, is that I've got one second. Um, I've got one of these PC12, yeah, PC12s. And you can literally map um, all the mixing desk settings within Logic to here. So you can ride and play the effect settings. So that's also what I'm going to do, and we can just kind of tweak them. Hopefully, in any, any second from now, also, my daughter's going to come up and ask you some of her nine-year-old questions, which has become... A, uh, a kind of uh, main the main events way more interesting than making dub tunes or, or, or talking to people she should be up in a second and she has asked to ask her own questions this time to kick me off the question uh, seat so that should be happening any second should be up um, in the meantime I guess uh, what I'll do is I'll map some of this stuff so you can hear what's going on um, if I drag this up here I'm going to save this as it stands. Now, within Logic, this can always be a little bit weird sometimes with different things. In Logic, you have a controller surface set up um, and you have a, a window. Oh, she's here just in time. Hold on. We might get a feed, bit of feedback now. I'm just going to turn it up. So it is. Come on in, sweetheart. Now, can you see? That's what you look like up there. So let me put you in the full screen. If you just run up the stairs and go, right, can you see here? So you need to come this way a little bit yeah. towards me. Can you see? That's it. <laughs> right. It is time for uh, a quiz, 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 quiz. This is going to be loud, I'm afraid, because I still haven't adjusted the level. <laughs> Okay, welcome to the quiz. We don't have a guest, so uh, it's up to the chatters. This is the of the chatters here. So everyone, oh look, there it is. Cal Marks there, Martin's here. Waggy, they're all saying hello to you. Ellie, is that Ellie the Elephant? It is Ellie the Elephant. Yeah, cool. How cool is that? <laughs> right, are you ready? Let me turn the music off so everyone can hear you. Right into the microphone. Are you ready to do your questions? What is the best character in Miraculous? Okay, so we'll have to wait a little bit. We'll put on some... 
was not heavy. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Does anybody know the best character in Miraculous? <laughs> the trouble is, some of these people will be having a delay before they can see it. So we might have to carry on in the background and then see if anyone comes back with a question. I know, Ellie's a hero. Ellie should be sitting on you. Ah, okay. All right. I don't think it's a show on Netflix. The miraculous Netflix. I think Waggy gets it for basically the best answer. What's the, what's the answer? Marionette. Or yeah, marionette or ladybug. Um, okay. Well, let's try another couple because these may not go so well. Which one would you like to do? I don't know. Do another couple more. How do I? Shoelaces. Ah, you must know that one. How does Lula May tie her shoelaces? Oh, the music's very loud, sorry. We just have no music for a little bit. Sorry, Chris. Oh, ah, inverted popes. That's you are favorite. the second favourite miraculous character. That is incredible. <laughs> Someone said double knot. Double knot, is it the answer? Double knot? No, sorry, sorry, grid mode, not double knot. Cresshead, that is just incredible. I think we should organise some prizes. I'm just going to drop that down because for you to get a miraculous, that's just awesome. Mm. Double that's knot. No. No, not a double knot. It's a hard one, to be fair. With your fingers. Uh, no. I don't Maybe think anyone's going to. No. Bunny rabbit knot, that's a good guess. I do know that one, but I don't use it a lot. Okay, what's the answer? With help. With help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wagyu, by asking someone to tie them for you or using Velcro. That counts, by asking yeah. someone to tie them for you for Wagyu. All right. Prize. Cool. Prize for Wagyu. We're going to get some Mr. Wiggly stickers done. So uh, okay. you're going to get those. And some for my shop. And some for Luna May's shop as well. Okay, one last question then. Um. You can choose which one. I don't think... I was watching, but it's yeah, so okay. He Here we go, then. Last um, question into the mic. How old is my cousin Lola? How old is Lula May's cousin Lola? Dum, 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 <laughs> da. <laughs> Let's have a look. Anyway. See who wins. I am so impressed that Cresshead would know. No, no, Jim. No, I'm afraid not. <laughs> There's your questions. I am nine. Got to be six. Oh. oh, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, that's Sensian. Sensian, you got it right. Sensian got it first right with nine. That is stunning with her eyes closed. Okay. <laughs> right, I don't know. Sensian. I lose. Fabulous, 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 fabulous. Well done, everybody. Yeah, Jim, sorry about that. Thank you so much, everyone, for, for taking part. Right, excuse us for a moment. Do you want to head back down again? Okay. All right, take Ellie. Say goodbye to everyone. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you so much. Can you shut the door on your way out? Cheers. You all right? Yeah. Cool. Well, that is the best quiz on YouTube, as far as I'm concerned. Thank you, Inverted Popes. That was, uh, um, yeah, what a good one. Um, I'll give you... A couple of music quiz questions just to keep you going whilst they do everything else. So, um, 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 Susan Boyle had a top 10 hit with a cover of which Rolling Stones song? Susan Boyle had a top 10 hit with a cover of which Rolling Stones song? So, we'll keep that running, see if anyone gets it. I wouldn't have a clue, but um, there you go. Okay, back to our amazing dub. Let's see what happens here. Sounds okay. So what I was going to do was I was going to um, map the uh, settings on the PC-12, which I'm about to pull up on the screen. I think that's probably a better angle. And let's just get this sorted so I can see what I'm doing. You get this weird and wonderful kind of... Um, parameter kind of 
thing um, and you, you click something and it learns it. It's kind of like Ableton. I think Ableton probably does this. Oh my gosh, Wild Horses. Unbelievable. Who was that? Sensian again. I think you were the first and only Sensian. So the 2.2 wins to Sensian. He's now top of the leaderboard. My goodness. Um, let's try. That's a terrible question. We can't have that. That's an easy one. What song was a big hit in the 1970s for Al Green? What song was a big hit in the 1970s for Al Green? I'm just going to find my headphones. Sorry. Okay. Sensing is indeed killing it. Give me shelter. No. Right. I'm now going to map um, a controller on my snare to the... Uh, send for the echo so i think what i do is i put this into learn mode and i wiggle this and then i wiggle this knob it's very very complicated and then i'm going to do it the same with this one and this one but that didn't seem to work oh it's not in learn mode there you go so i'm going to do this one this one and this one so, theoretically, I can now play the mixing desk in Logic. Let's stay together. Yes, yes, yes. Is that sensey in the game? Ah, oh, grid mode got it. Grid mode got it first. Got it first. And you're both in YouTube. Pretty close. Same timestamp, to be fair. But yeah, one for grid mode there. Excellent stuff. Lisa Left Eye Lopez was a member of which girl band? And let's see if these knobs work. Okay, so this is happening. I can turn this knob here and I can get um, some uh, space, not space echo, some uh, spring reverb going. And I'm going to be able to turn this one and get some decent delay working. So if you just give me a second, there are so many wonderful little windows open here. Just let me grab the one that I need. Control services set up. Nope. Bear with me, folks. I'll put a little bit of uh, background music on. While I just find out what I'm doing. That's it. Controller assignments. Here we go. Okay. Let's just cancel that for a second. Now, let's see what we did. Um, I will try once more to set these up. So what I want to do is I want to take um, this send, which is going to the spring, uh, so the, to the delay. I'm going to click learn mode. I'm going to wiggle this one, send one, aux one, and I'm going to wiggle this one. Cool. I'm going to switch that off. Now, when I play it, I should be able to, yeah. Can you see when I'm turning this thing, it's sending this. And then I'm going to do the same for this send below it. So I'm going to click learn mode. I'm going to wiggle this one. And I'm actually going to learn this fader. Okay, switch it off. So let's chuck that out of the way. So now I should have a couple of controllers set. There you go. Now, all I have to do now is apply the same settings and the same logic to the delay channel itself. And I'll be able to kind of ride the whole delay. So when the guys in the chat um, are, uh, are kind of talking about playing the mixing desk, this is exactly what it is. But you're doing it completely uh, within the door. Destiny's Child, you're right. And uh, I'm afraid I can't tell you where I'm getting the questions from, Inky. That would, that would, that would be cheating. Uh, okay, one more. Coldplay's first album was called What? I'm getting them from these, these pieces of paper, to be honest. Hit save now, G3 Warrior, you're a genius. That is exactly what I need to do. Okay, so I'm now going to go to the tape delay section, and I'm going to put them up this end of the desk. So I'm going to say, right, uh, learn this uh, feedback on the delay, which is this one. 
and I'm going to attach it to this fader, which I think is now done. And then I'm going to say learn. Uh, actually, we'll just use that for now. Don't want to get too complicated. So here is my track. If I send it into the delay, that works. If I turn up the feedback on the delay with this other knob, it does nothing, which is really annoying. So I will just check that mapping. Let's just see. This one should be turning this one. So I'm going to learn that again. Learn this one. Is it this one? Yeah, I think I learned the wrong one. No, it's this one. I'm going to mop it that one. Let's just see what that does. And doesn't like me. Really doesn't like me. So let me see. Let me get rid of these two. One second. I knew it was going to go kind of weird. Just going to delete a couple of things and I'll try it one more time. So we've got this one, we've got that one. So one more time, here is my wiggly send. I'm going to hit learn. I'm going to wiggle the send. I'm going to wiggle that. I really should have learned that now and it's even working. So. Now if we run the track. There you go. So now we have control on this knob and this knob. This is the amount that sends into the delay. This is the amount of feedback on the delay. Um, and I can set that up obviously on each and every channel so I can start running the, the vocals into there and all sorts of crazy stuff that's going on. And that's what the guys are talking about when they're saying we can play the mixing desk. I can hit literally, um, if I just solo the snare for a second. That's pure delay coming back. I can just ride and play around to my heart's content. And I can kick it off again. There you go. And the reason that you're hearing a kind of mass of slightly random delays, which is what makes it so good, is the setting in the tape delay with um, down here, the flutter rate. There's a tiny bit of modulation in there as well, which means that the, the delays are just kind of moving. And then if you play around with the high cut and stuff, you can make it kind of um, more dirty, really. So if you mute everything out, let me just grab one again. There you go. You're literally just playing the reverb, uh, playing the delay thing. So all of a sudden, you can kind of just chuck things together in Logic and, and instead of kind of, well, obviously you can automate this stuff. You could run the whole track down and automate everything and then just record it as a pass. But quite often, I just I just basically bounce the whole thing onto two tracks and do some passes and then just mess with those and drop them in again. It's just a different way of thinking. Um, and for ages, I had a real kind of problem with um, not having a mixing desk. And even the mixing desk I have, like there's a touch screen here in front of me um, that it just doesn't feel like normal you know you want the, the the only problem with this one that i've got now it doesn't have faders but i can use a volume you know a knob at the bottom for volume but it does mean that you can move around and you can play this whole kind of stuff um so let's see what else we can do really quickly um did anyone get this oh that's the susan boyle song what was that? Oh, the cold play album did anyone get it was called parachutes anyone get that no, no, no. No one knew Coldplay. Wow, they can get Susan Boyle, but no one can get Coldplay. Doesn't that say a lot about 
the sign of the times by Prince. Okay, let me do this. I grabbed some vocals from a YouTube video <laughs> about 10 minutes before we went on uh, from a guy who works, um, amazing guy, who works at the Shiloh Sound System. And he's come from the UK. He's moved to uh, Amsterdam. He's called Bread and Neil. If you if you look up Shiloh Sound System on Facebook, they do the most amazing streams. They're really positive and all sorts. So I'm just going to drag that in. It's nothing special. It's just him chatting um, about the Shiloh Sound System. But I thought if we added a bit of echo and reverb to it and then sort of started messing around with dropping things in and out, um, it might actually sound all right so i'm just going to loop these a bit more see what we've got on that track high quality machines <laughs> there you go now i can the journey that we go on some some sends on there five years but now i feel like i'm an audio engineer i understand that i understand that. <laughs> so it makes then playing a lot easier but that's only technical. That, that's only that little part, right? When you play a session, it's something else going on. What are you doing? What, what, what is your purpose to do? You know? You have a, a thousand people. What is your purpose? Yeah, I mean, why, Jasha? I mean, we've only mapped a couple of things onto this. Uh... Oh, and of course you can. Oh, not quite enough delay to make it work. Um, we've only mapped two of these knobs together. So I've literally got a delay send and a delay feedback, one at each end of the, um, of the controller. So, I mean, if I just flip back so you could kind of see what was going on, you kind of hear, hear a lot more of what was happening. Um, I only have uh, this knob here uh, to effect send on the snare, and this to basically ride the feedback on the uh, on the amp on the on the uh, return of the delay. So you know it's kind of really simple. If you mapped every single channel, and there's only what have we got? Seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven channels. And I won't do it now because it is a little bit tricksy, and I didn't want to have it all preset before I started. I just thought we'd just uh, kind of mess around and see where we got to. Definitely needs a dub siren sense in. Um, but you can already hear it's just got a little bit of earthy kind of emotion going on. If it, I mean, I'll just do a little bit more of that kind of stuff. Um, if we just take everything out apart from Shiloh for a second. And I was adding kind of some of the settings take on the fly. Machines. So that's uh, his track out. there. Take 25 years, but now I feel like... like I'm an audio, I'm an audio, audio engineer. I understand. I understand. I understand. I understand. I understand. I understand. So, so it makes things laying laying But that's only that's technical. That's only 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 technical. messing with the door now ideally get everything mapped onto here all i'd be doing is doing this and i'd be able to ride absolutely everything so i'm probably going to do a not a live video just a kind of proper walkthrough without you know without messing around to how the whole thing works but being able to drop in and, and mute stuff on the basis here as well rather than having to try and click stuff makes a big difference 
you know, so you get the idea. High pass the vocal, that was the other thing. All right, so putting filters across this stuff makes a massive difference. So the first thing you could do is um, you could literally take uh, the stereo out and you could put a filter on it. Um, there's probably better filters to use that are a little bit more kind of nasty sounding, but if I've got a, like a fab filter, Q3, that'll do um, a high pass. So you literally click that. High quality machine. And we can drop everything back in. All that kind of stuff. What I'd normally do, I think, is I'd group everything out so the kicks kind of stayed out of that high pass. But you heard, it's brilliant, actually. Whoever said that in the, in the chat, the high pass on the... Um, high pass on the vocal because you'll hear it instantly and it's almost giving it um, a kind of uh, telephony kind of sound. So if we take the high pass out on that one for a second and I just add, um, I'll put the normal um, logic EQ here because we might as well just use as much stock logic stuff as possible because the EQ is actually really good as well. It has a telephone setting um, on EQ tools and somewhere, where are we? Telephone EQ. Uh, that's, I think, to make you sound better if you're on the telephone. But the other EQ is, where are we? It's, um, man, it's been here for ages unless they've moved it. Oh, no. That's a shame. Oh, phone filter notch. There you go. <laughs> yeah, suddenly the whole thing sounds cool again. I need some more gain on it though. Let's do that uh, utility gain. Yeah, I mean, why, Josh? So there you go, really. I mean, it's kind of cool, isn't it? For for messing around for 45 minutes with a camera on me, it's much better than I thought it would go, to be fair. And there's so much more you can do. It's it's definitely one for, um, for its own video, and I will run it. Um, like I said before, the most important thing to imagine is basically just map the aux sends, the mutes, not even the levels, to be honest, to something. Could be one of those little Korg nano controllers. Doesn't have to be one of these. These are reasonably expensive and, and kind of useful for when you need loads and loads of knobs like that. But but a little mini, one of those little mini Korg ones or whatever. Just just if you've got a little bit of control and get them on the effects returns as well so that you can literally send the effects returns to themselves. Um, then you're laughing. It's kind of all good. I don't know if anyone's got to got any questions or anything um it would be nice to find a little little skanky guitar sound the guitar skank as in not skank as in skanky i guess uh let's have a look and see what we can find the other the other one is you there's loads of little fills and stuff that you can do um and we didn't even get into to playing some fills on the on the drum kit let's have a look um All that crazy stuff. Um, let me just have a look, see if I can find a guitar library before we disappear. So I'm going to have another software instrument. Um, <clears throat> might be contact again, to be honest. Let me just see if there's anything in the in the standard um, Logic Sampler, which is now called Sampler used to be called ESX24 but I think it's pretty much does the same as it used to uh, we have got some let's have a look Loop Masters dub these are just some samples from um, from Loop Masters 
dry horns. What we were at 138 BPM. Let's have a look at that. See what we've got. It's always worth trying to find the right key before you mess around with uh, with the drums and the bass. Let's have another quick look if there's any guitars and stuff going on. Um, these are all loops, aren't they? Ragatoms and fills. You get the idea. I mean, it's probably best not to make too much of a of a mess of this thing as we can kind of quit while we're ahead um cool if anyone's got any questions or anything that would be great um let's finish off with a nice little quiz question um cole porter wrote the songs for which musical Ooh. that is uh oh, says the mic stand Slappers and fluffers, what a description. Yeah, Morgan, that <laughs> that was the ESX24 uh, sampler thing, wasn't it? Now, that's really interesting. I can quickly show you that. It's actually really, really useful. Uh, where did you see it? Uh, slappers and fluffers. Right. Basically, you've got a load of fluffers and a load of slappers. The slappers are the transients on the front of the kick drum. So they're really slappy. So if you've got a kick drum that needs more punch, you load up a slapper. The fluffers are the other end of it. So if you've already got a nice punch, but you've got no boom, you've got no fluff, then you load up one of those. Now, back in the day, before things like kick two came around, where you could just dial in your slapper or your fluffer, and it would have been better to have called it slappers or fluffers two, these things were kind of really useful if you just wanted to load in a, particularly the slappers actually, if you want to make your kick drums a little bit deeper, I tend to just put a little tone underneath there or, you know, some kind of, a, some kind of, you know, very, very basic thing just to give it some welly. But, um, but yeah, it's quite useful if you've got a live kick as well, if you just want to add some, uh, um, yeah, let's add some oomph. Is it the live slappers and fluffers VST from Razzie? I, Razzle, I don't know. It's from a guy on Gear Sluts, now Gear Space, a long time ago, who was just on the forums just chatting about stuff. And uh, he just made it. And he, I think it was about $10 or something. You know, he would just sell it around if you, if you wanted it. So, and I can't, it was literally years ago. It's probably about 10, 15 years ago. Um, but it is one of the best names ever. Okay, did anybody get Cole Porter? I very, very much doubt it. I think, you know, it, it, these questions just pale compared to Lula May's nine-year-old questions. Um, yeah, slappers and fluffers definitely do have a different meaning around these parts. These parts too, it's like, it's just a jokey thing that he came up with. Um, Okie doke. Well, it was Kiss Me Kate. So on that note... It's been an hour. Um, I think this went all right. Thank you so much for still being here. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of blown away. It's really, really nice to have you. And hopefully you'll tune in again next week. Not quite sure what we're going to do next week. Um, probably an interview or something. If anyone's got any ideas and stuff. Um, <laughs> and yeah, you waggers just remind me. I didn't use incinerator on any of this stuff, did I? Man, what an idiot. What an idiot. Next time. Next time. Um, it would actually be brilliant on the kick and everything else but um i'll i'll tell you what i'll i'll use it on uh, a video that i'll do this week which is basically taking this and editing it down into something a little bit tighter and showing you completely mapped on the fader tool and doing a longer jam and then maybe if i leave it set up i can do another jam next week in amongst some some other stuff i guess so but thank you so much thank you so much i'm going to leave you uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. I guess there's some more streams on. I hope so. Um, I'd love to see you back again next week. I'll be doing something. And as this seems to have gone pretty well, to be honest, um, maybe I'll do some more bits and pieces like this. But like, as I say, drop me something on YouTube or Facebook or whatever you want or telling key. If there's stuff that you want to see or know about that would fit a live stream kind of thing, um, then I'm well up for it. All right. 
brilliant. Thank you so much, as I say. And I will see you either on Facebook or uh, this time, same place, same time, same place next week. Cheers for now. Connect so we be our pipe Link up the harmonize, let the germy But be an obsolete blessings that burn fright We live a line which I love like for me no shot Worldwide, cosmic love energy I go purpose I free organic I live is there worthwhile Watch the way one of you change your points In terms of definitions and some germite Yes, I check the eye One side is defined by one side the other I e I am an idea of mine I assign to most of the qualities of my guys Who's we if I'm talking like this? Who of me?